Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at some of the lesser talked about features of iOS 4. So on the last episode of MacMost Now and all over the web, people have been talking about multitasking and app folders and other major features of iOS 4. But sometimes it's the little things that make the big difference. And there are a lot of little features in iOS 4 that even work on the 3GS. Let's take a look at some of these. First, let's take a look at something in the multitasking feature. If you double tap on the home button, you get the apps that are running and you can flip through them. But if you go all the way to the left, you get a special set of controls. The iPod icon is always there and you can jump to iPod even if the iPod app isn't running at the moment. And you can also do play uh, next and previous for your iPod. So it's very easy to access that. And here on the left is the orientation lock. Click that and it's just like clicking the button that's on the side of the iPad. So you can lock orientation, very useful if you're using iBooks, of course. And so here's a demonstration of the spell check feature. Autocorrect still works like it did before, but if you do get a misspelled word in a piece of text in a standard app, uh, like here in Notes, it will have a red underline under it, and you can tap it, and it'll give you suggestions, and you can select, and it will change the word. From the App Store app, you now have the ability to gift an app to somebody. Just go down to where you would buy the app, and click Gift This App, and then you, you then get to fill in the information for the recipient and a personal message. When you email a photo to somebody now, like you can see there's one attached to this message here, when you go to send it, it will actually give you sizing options now. So you can decide whether to send it as a small file, which you probably should in most cases, or all the way up to the actual size of the photo. When you use the spotlight search feature by going to the left of all of your screens, if uh, you type a term in, you'll get your normal results like mail messages, uh, web page bookmarks, things like that, but you also at the bottom get search web and search Wikipedia. In settings under network, you have the enable 3G as before, and you've got data roaming on and off, but you also have some new things. One is to turn off cellular data completely. So that just gives you a complete unquestioned control that you're not going to get or receive any cellular data if you're in an area where you're roaming. You also, of course, have the set up internet tethering. Here's one that's been talked about a bit in YouTube now. You can view videos in vertical mode, not just horizontal mode, which can come in handy if you prefer holding your iPhone like this. A great new feature is for SMS under settings and messages, you can turn on character count and you can only see it appear after you get to uh, a second line. You can see it appear right above the send button. So we also have the ability to have more secure passcodes. In the general settings, you go to passcode lock. Here you've got simple passcode. If it's on, it's still a four digit number. If you turn simple passcode off, then you can turn it on and type in an actual password with letters and numbers rather than just four digits. For Gmail users, the great new feature, not only is your mail threaded, but also you've got the ability to archive rather than delete messages. A great new addition to the Notes app is the fact that you've got accounts now and you can have your notes filed away in email accounts uh, as IMAP and things like MobileMe have notes that are synced. And something that isn't mentioned very much, uh, you know about app folders, like I've got one here, but did you know that you could use an app folder in the dock down below? So you could actually populate your entire dock down here with app folders. So some of my other favorite features include the ability to open up attachments from emails in third-party applications. If a third-party application has registered itself with the OS as handling something, like say a PDF or a Word file, then you should be able to open those attachments using that third-party app. Also, there's a birthdays calendar which will list the birthdays of people in your contacts in the calendar app. Hope you like this look at some of the finer details of iOS 4. There's a lot of other small features as well. If you want, you can list your favorites to this post at macmost.com. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig.